A few months ago, I went to Detroit Sneaker Con, shopping around for beaters to bring back to the channel. One of the many pairs that I bought were these Fear Force that are super beat inside and out, it's missing wings, and it has a broken back tab. I paid 80 bucks for these, and looking back on it, I paid way too much for them. This is a $20 sneaker. With the amount of work and time I gotta put into these sneakers, it might not be worth it at the end, but this video is gonna have a ton of restoration knowledge and a sweet before and after. Let's get started. This restoration is gonna need everything. A deep clean, remove the yellowing, paint, glue, new wings, a new back tab, but we gotta start somewhere. I'm gonna start with the deep clean and removing the yellowing. I'm gonna start off by using the brass bristle brush and our solution to give these soles a good deep clean. I wanna get rid of all the grime and dirt by giving it a good scrub. After that, we'll move on to the Sword Vibe and the Vague 2000. All right, soles look good, a lot cleaner than what we started with. The uppers are a little wet, but I'm not too worried about it. Later on, I will give it a deep clean. The Vic 2000 gets pretty warm, so the little areas on the uppers that are wet will dry really fast. Next step is to apply some Rejuvenator Sore Revive. I'm gonna apply one thin coat of Sore Revive on one side of the sneaker, let it sit in there for a few hours, and then I'll flip it to the opposite side. Got the shoe out of the Vic 2000. It still needs more time on both sides, but we'll come back to that later. I'm gonna continue the cleaning on the uppers. The soles are good to go, so this cleaning should be pretty easy. The insides and the outsides are pretty disgusting. I am gonna be putting the shoe inside the washing machine. However, I've cleaned the shoe in the past before. I already know for a fact, the black on this leather bleeds like crazy. It's gonna bleed onto the tag. It might bleed onto the white sock liner as well. But again, I'm not really too worried about that. If it happens, it happens. The shoe is disgusting. Once it gets rinsed out and it fully dries, the bleeding shouldn't be too noticeable. I'm gonna start off by grabbing a brush, go next door and use the compressor to blow off all the surface dust and debris from the inside of the shoe. Good to go with the compressor. That step was major for this shoe. So much stuff on the inside. First, I'm gonna grab the shoe tree, place it inside. As you can see, there's a lot of creasing going on in the toe box. Once you're done with the cleaning, it should look a lot better. After that, we'll squirt some solution into our bowl of water and get it going. First brush I'm gonna be using is a saw bristle brush. I'm gonna start off with the uppers, get the suede all cleaned up. Same thing with the insides. Saw bristle brush is good to go. Let's move on to the medium bristle brush. I'm only gonna be using that for the midsoles to get it nice and clean. I'm also gonna give the insole a good scrub. To complete the cleaning, we gotta put them in the washing machine. Everything's good to go. Let's put everything inside the laundry bag. Put the shoe, the insole, and the lace, and then we'll put the detergent pot in the wash to complete it. Got the shoe out of the washing machine, it's fully dried, ready to go. There is a couple of issues that I gotta take care of later. The first one being is a suede. There is some marks all over the place. It's pretty rough. We gotta reset the nap on the suede and do some sanding to remove those marks. We'll do that later. There is also some bleeding on the tongue tag, mainly in this corner right here. I think I could get that off, but I don't wanna saturate it too much with more water and solution because that will cause more bleeding. If you guys ever clean these shoes up, you most likely have to put these in the washing machine and rinse them through. If you don't, this dye is just gonna continue to run all over the white and it's gonna bleed everywhere. Next step is to replace the back tab. This top piece is completely chewed off. The whole thing's gotta get replaced. Since I have a bunch of back tabs, I'm thinking I'm gonna replace this with the Nike Air. First, using a blade, I gotta cut off all the stitching from the tab and this bottom piece. I gotta be very careful and not cut into the suede material. Back tabs are off, now we need to find some replacements. These are a size 12, so in the boneyard, we gotta find the right size. I'm looking for a Nike Air. If I don't find a size 12 Nike Air, I'll settle for the Jumpman. Too small, broken, blue, white, Thunder 4s, too yellow, 
more red, these don't work. Ideally, these would be perfect, but these only go up to a size eight and a half, so that's way too small. Threes, 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 white cements, broken, threes. I guess this is my only option. Size 12 and a half, red and black Jordan 4 tabs. Let's see how these look. I mean, it doesn't look bad considering there is a red air unit inside the shoe. And considering that I don't have anything else, this might have to be the move. It doesn't look too off. Ideally, I wish I had a white Nike Air or something with the white or gray Jumpman. Unfortunately, I don't have any of that. I could go online, buy some brand new back tabs, but in my opinion, it's not worth it for this shoe. It should still look pretty dope with these back tabs. Once they're on, maybe I'll do something else to add some more red onto the sneaker. Let's get all this stuff out the way and start prepping these. The back tab process is a lot of work, so it makes more sense to do some sanding on the uppers first. Mainly because back here, I am gonna be applying some brand new stitching. I don't wanna sand over it and fray the material. That goes for the rest of the shoe as well. When I'm sanding, I don't wanna hit any of the stitching because it'll fray it and it'll look bad. When it comes to the uppers as well, there's black, charcoal gray, and a lighter gray suede. I'm not gonna do anything with the top portion. These two colors are lighter, so you can see some of the marks. With the sanding, I'm hoping to even everything out and remove those marks. For this process, I'm gonna be using 800 gray sandpaper and 1,000. Sanding is complete. The suede is back to be buttery smooth. There is a couple of marks that are still left. They're not as noticeable as before. It is what it is. Next focus is the midsole. I gotta remove all the old paint to give it some fresh paint. There is some scuffing going on on this side. On the opposite side, there's a bunch of peeling. Using acetone and cotton balls, I'll get all of that off. One thing I wanna show you guys is the midsole. For the longest time, I thought it was just a solid black paint job with white speckles. But after looking at it closely, there's actually a small gradient involved. On this side, it goes from charcoal gray to black. It's very subtle, very slight. You can see it in different angles. Same thing with the opposite side. This is actually charcoal gray and it fades off from here to black. I gotta recreate that, but let's focus on the prep work first. Now to wipe off all the paint, I am gonna be using acetone and cotton balls. The only thing I gotta watch out for is to not drench the cotton balls in acetone. The only reason is because we are working with the suede upper. If I drench it and get it underneath the tape, it will cause some damage. Two things you wanna watch out for if you're working with a Jordan 3 or Jordan 4 midsole. You don't wanna scrub too hard on the polyurethane midsole because that could scrub some of the material off and cause a rough surface. Also, when it comes to the air unit, don't get any acetone in that area. It'll cause the plastic to get really foggy and it just won't look as clear. Mitchells are fully stripped. Real quick, using a heat gun, I'm gonna try to clear up the air units. As you can see, they're pretty foggy on both sides. The heat gun should do the trick. Air units are back to clear. You can see the red now. Let's take care of some more easy stuff. The wings on both sides of the shoe are coming off. As you can see, it's cracking. The only piece holding it together is this back area right here. That's enough to put it back together. I am gonna be using glue for this part. For this shoe, it's gonna be a lot easier. Luckily for me, the wings are still kind of intact. Bar Super Stick should do the trick. I'm gonna tape everything around the wings, lay down some Bar Super Stick, let it cure for about 20 minutes, heat it up, stick it together, and it should do the trick. While I got the glue out, let's take care of the insole as well. This insole is so beat, it's starting to peel. A little bit of glue should do the trick. I'm gonna apply a thin coat on each side, let it sit for a minute or two, and then stick it together. Back to brand new. <laughs> Wings are locked in, these look good. While we have the glue out, let's fix some separation. We have two parts we gotta fix, one on the inside, and one on this side as well. There's so a couple things I gotta do first. I'm gonna grab a blade, I'm gonna stick it in there and roughen up the material. Using acetone, I already prepped the mental area, so that part's good to go. Once the material's roughened up, I'm gonna grab some tape, put it on the uppers, get some glue inside so I don't get any on the uppers. Then I'll let it cure for about 20 to 30 minutes, heat it up, and stick it together. It's been over 30 minutes, glue's fully cured. For this, you just need very little heat to activate the glue. Glue job's out the way, let's get on to the paint job. I'm gonna tape off everything but the midsoles, including the air units, so I can airbrush the paint. I'm gonna start off by laying down some charcoal gray. 
For this custom mix, I just used two colors, black and white. The charcoal gray is really dark. In certain angles, it looks black. In other angles, you can see the gray. Once the gray is done, I can move on to the black. To do the gradient process, I'm gonna spray in the opposite direction of the gray. The one thing I don't wanna do is airbrush in the direction of the gray, cause that'll ruin the gradient. Also, this gradient is gonna be very subtle. It's not supposed to stand out. The only way you'll see it is in certain angles. Paint job is complete. Mission complete with the gradient. It looks nice and subtle. One thing I do wanna to touch on is the texture of the midsole. In some areas, it's nice and smooth, but in other areas, it's super rough. It's very porous. This is for two different reasons. The shoe is on the older side. They came out in 2014. Most midsoles from that era or older are gonna turn out this way. It is what it is. The second reason is I might have scrubbed way too hard using acetone and cotton balls. I warned you guys before that that might happen and it happened over here. That being said, there is a solution. I could go in, lay down some more paint, sand it down with some 1200 grit sandpaper, repeat that process a good four to five times to get it nice and smooth. But for this one, I'm not gonna do that. But I am gonna move on to laying down the speckles. This midsole originally had white speckles all around. It looked nice and clean, but I'm thinking for this midsole, I'm gonna lay down red speckles. It should go nicely with the red air unit and the back tab. I'm gonna get some red paint on the toothbrush and speckle it on with my finger. Once both sides are done, I'll go in with a little Q-tip to add some thicker speckles. With the toothbrush, it can be hard to aim, but with the Q-tip, you can be more precise. The midsole's out the way, let's get back to the back tabs. I could go in and directly sew this onto the shoe. However, it's really hard to do so. And all this stitching that would be on the outside would also be on the inside sock liner and it will look really ugly. To make things easier, we're gonna glue it on. It holds up really well if you do the correct prep work and I'm gonna show you guys how to do so. On the back tab, on this top portion area, there's two lines of stitching. We're gonna recreate that with some black thread and a needle. All we gotta do is fill in those holes. All right, stitching looks really good on the tab. It looks factory. We're done with this. We'll come back to that in a bit. We gotta repeat that same process onto the shoe. On this area, the two lines of thread is completely missing. We ripped that out when we took out the old tab. We gotta replace it. I got some gray thread that's close enough to the original. I'm gonna put it inside using this little needle right here. I went ahead and gave it a curve so it could be easier to put inside the holes. Stitching looks good, but there's still more prep work that's gotta be done. For the shoe, we gotta hit it with the Dremel. Specifically in this area, we gotta roughen up the material. On the back tab, we're gonna go outside and spray some adhesion promoter. This is all gonna help with the bonding process. That's it, don't overdo it. Glue's been applied, it's fully cured. At the moment, it's not tacky at all. To make sure it's aligned perfectly, I'm gonna place it inside, make sure it looks good. Once I'm confident on the placement, I'm gonna hold one side intact, on the opposite side, hit it with some heat, start bonding it. Then I'll move on to the opposite side, finish off with the middle and make sure everything's lined up perfectly. So far so good, that back tab's on there, everything lined up nicely, that red and black Nike goes hard. Next step is the tongue tag. Originally I was gonna try to remove the dye, however, I'm pretty sure it's on there good. Plus if I get the tongue wet all over again, the dye is gonna run onto the tongue tag and possibly make it worse. So what I'm thinking is replacing the whole tongue tag. The shoe is still missing some red and black. We got it on the midsole, the air unit, and the back tab, but it's still missing something. I went through my boneyard and found this bad boy right here. This is from a Bread 4, it's red and black. It should go nicely with the rest of the shoe. I'm gonna add some simulated stitching with the machine, cut this one off, Glue this one on over here and it's gonna look like it's been stitched on. When doing simulated stitching, you wanna go over the original holes so none of those holes show. Stitching is applied. I'm gonna apply glue on both parts, let it cure for a couple minutes, and then I'll stick it together. Tongue tag looks great. Two things are left. We gotta spray some mink oil on the suede to bring back the color and lace it up. All right guys, that's gonna bring us to an end on this restoration and custom on these Fear 4s. Everything on the shoe was needed. We started off by giving the shoe a good deep clean on the inside, outsides, and the soles. Got rid of all the grime and dirt. After that, we put them in the indoor setup for several days to remove the yellowing. As you can see on the before, there's some harsh yellowing going on on the rubber outsole. All of that got wiped off nicely. We removed all the old paint, gave it a nice gradient with some red speckles to go with the air unit, back tab, and the tongue. This is the original release of the Fear 4s. They're coming out again in November. Drop a comment down below if you're planning on copying a pair. I'll pick one of the comments to win a Rejuvenator Signature Shoe Cleaning Kit. This is Vic Almighty. I'll catch you guys on Monday. See you guys.